with the visit here of U.S. Secretary of State Tony Blinken. Let's get back to the topic of U.S.-Israel relations, but on a different subject with, I would say, a positive note. An announcement by the American Embassy here that Israel has finally attained a key requirement in getting onto the U.S.'s visa waiver program for foreign travelers, namely reducing the annual rejection rate of Israeli visa applications to the U.S. in the prior fiscal year below the 3% benchmark, this for the very first time. Here's U.S. Ambassador to Israel Tom Nides and Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen reacting to the news. Israel has made one huge step towards the visa waiver program. The visa waiver refusal rate is under 3%, and we're announcing that today. But we're not there yet. Dropping below 3% visa refusal rate is just the first step for Israel to complete the same process that 40 other countries around the world have done to get into the visa waiver program. Second point, Israel now has a lot of work to do in a short period of time. The Knesset needs to act. There are laws that need to pass to get Israel eligible for the visa waiver. The whole Israeli government will have to move quickly on many technical requirements. We will take all the necessary measures, including legislation, in order to meet the requirements by the end of this year. And still with us is the former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, Daniel Shapiro, joining us from Anana. And uh, Mr. Ambassador, I'm sure you dealt with this issue in your tenure, perhaps even more than you would have liked to. Uh, but is that uh, Ellie Cohn's prognosis realistic, that Israel could finally get this done to America's satisfaction by the end of this year? Well, it's certainly possible, and it's possible thanks to a lot of hard work that's already been done. We did some in the Obama administration, I'm sure continued during the Trump years, but certainly Ambassador Tom Nides uh, has uh, really made this a uh, central uh, focus of his ambassadorship. Uh, what uh, he stated is accurate. Uh, uh, now that Israel, the Israeli refusal rate of these applications is below 3%, it opens a window of time, I think until September 30th, by which Israel must meet all the other requirements. There's some legislation that needs to pass about the sharing of information uh, between uh, the Israeli and U.S. law enforcement communities. Uh, uh, there's some information, some other legislation regarding the the, the uh, rules or revolving around passports. Uh, and then the, one of the most important, which you didn't play in your clip, uh, is that uh, Israel provide assurances and guarantees that all U.S. citizens will have the same access to Israel that Israeli citizens would have in the visa waiver program uh, to the United States, uh, what's called reciprocity. Uh, there have been issues in the past with uh, 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 Israel, American citizens of Palestinian origin or other uh, Arab American uh, communities who have sometimes found it difficult to come into Israel uh, or been forced to enter through other uh, crossing points rather than fly into Ben Gurion Airport. Uh, full reciprocity would mean that all American citizens would be treated the same uh, on their arrival. And uh, if all of those requirements can be achieved, then uh, uh, these Israel will enter the visa waiver program, and uh, it will be so much easier for uh, Israelis to visit uh, the United States for travel, for tourism, for, for family visits, and for business. Uh, since you mentioned the Palestinian issue, I do want to go back to uh, the comments by uh, uh, Secretary Blinken regarding the, uh, 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 the Palestinian issue. Uh, clearly, though, the Biden administration and the Netanyahu government are on different pages here. Is there, gonna, uh, is there common ground they could find? What kind of message? perhaps, would Secretary Blinken have for Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas tomorrow? Well, first of all, I, again, it wasn't in the clips, but I know that Secretary Blinken uh, has stated before his arrival, and I'm sure here as well, uh, the, a complete and total uh, support for Israel in the face of the horrific terror uh, that was on display on Shabbat in Jerusalem, uh, on Holocaust Remembrance Day of all days, uh, just the unacceptable nature of that. And uh, and the strong support for Israel's right of self-defense. Uh, he uh, condemns the attack. And, and, of course, in the past, President Biden has talked about the, uh, the condemning the failure to condemn the attack. That's usually a direct reference to the Palestinian Authority and, of course, to these vile celebrations uh, we've seen uh, of the attack. And I know that on his agenda in Ramallah with President Abbas will be a demand uh, to end the Palestinian Authority payments to the families of those who carry out these acts of terrorism. At the same time, he's clearly going to urge both sides to prevent uh, uh, the things that would actually make the situation worse or would make it impossible to eventually 
resume negotiations that could lead back on the path toward a two state. So that means no additional acts of terror, of course, no payments for terrorists. It means no proposals for dramatic expansion of settlements or in E1 or other sensitive areas or any de facto measures of annexation. Uh, certainly no vigilante justice, citizens taking laws into their own hands. Prime Minister Netanyahu has spoken against that and are certainly trying to sustain the security cooperation uh, between Israel and the Palestinian Authority that actually has been very effective over the years. But I guess if there's one area where uh, the United States and Israel could most find themselves on the same page on this, is trying to draw some positive energy from the best thing that's happening in the Middle East, that's the Abraham Accords and the normalization right. agreements, into the Israeli-Palestinian arena. Help these have these Arab states who are now friends of Israel, who are condemning terror themselves, who are doing Holocaust education, who are opening their publics to interchange with Israel, also show that Palestinians could benefit by taking part rather than by rejecting uh, uh, in normalization. Right. Uh, and in so doing, they could open up space for improved conditions for Palestinians, include that improved education, job opportunities, but also be the friends who can say to Israel, please don't do the things that would actually take two states uh, over the cliff and keep that option alive because it's important uh, to us in the right. Arab world as well. All right, Ambassador Daniel Shapiro, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. My pleasure.